Stuart, was that a disappointing performance, would you say? Yeah, massively disappointing. Um, the levels that we've, we've got to in, in recent weeks have brought us good results, good performances. I, I felt we came up short in that, Scott, um, in so many different aspects of it. From how we started the game, I felt that we were um, standing in the back foot. I didn't feel we were proactive enough in the game. Um, and we sort of let Aberdeen come on to us and dominate the ball. Um, you know, It's our home patch. We've been in good form. Um, the, the game plan and the thought process all week was that we'd go and meet them high and we'd go and try and take the game to them. And it was anything but that in the opening period. Um, we started to sneak our way into the game. We started to find uh, one or two opportunities. Sam Nicholson's through and the goalkeeper sort of springs to mind and one or two other half chances in there. But genuinely, I wasn't, I wasn't happy. I wasn't content with, with, with what we've seen in the first half. And we try to get a reaction by making a couple of substitutions. Um, we try to see if we can tweak our formation, which we did um, uh, several times, to go and try and see if we can create better chances and show that wee bit more, um, more of a proactive nature in the game. You know, trying to pick Aberdeen off, trying to get deliveries and crosses into the box with numbers in the penalty area. Um, and it never really come to fruition, if I'm being honest with you. Um, but all of that said, do I think that we probably deserved a point out of the game? I, I do. Without being at our best, I still feel that we probably deserved at least a draw out of that game. And um, no doubt we'll talk about it in a minute or two, that some of the farcical things that, that you start to see in a football pitch that relates to VAR and decision-making, um, no, I don't want to make that as an excuse, but listen, we can't, we can't ignore it. We can't not say it's there. It's a dangerous territory for someone to speculate after the game, if and buts and all that, but if that goal from Lennon Miller stands, do you think that's a different second half? Yeah, they're, they're, listen, they are defining moments, they're huge in the game because we've not played particularly well, although you know we're not getting, we're not being battered by Aberdeen by any stretch of imagination, um, but it's a big time to score a goal and you start to see the, the emotion and the, and the backing that you start to get around about the stadium. Um, we're on the front foot at that point, if that goal stands, which uh, without question it should, I mean, the fact that it doesn't is just the, the, one of the most baffling things I've seen um, in recent times and that's saying something. Um, um, and I just feel that from, from our side of things, we, we, we did want a reaction thereafter. You accept that that's the decision that's been made. Um, but to answer your question, Scott, well, that is, it's a momentum changer. It's a huge game changer in our favour. Um, and when you've worked hard to try and find a way out of what's not been a great performance, you feel as if you've put yourself in a reasonable position. Um, and if we just discuss the, the incident itself, um, everyone will watch it again tonight on Sports Scene. Everyone will have a look tonight and, and, and see what's in it. We had an incident earlier in the season um, against Ross County. The Ross County player controls it with his hand above his head, uh, controls the ball, settles on the ground, shifts it. And I think it might have been Brophy at the time, puts it in the back of the net as a goal from, from Ross County. We're apoplectic at the side here, we're going mad at the officials and telling them, we could see quite clearly that the, the, the Ross County player had controlled it in the lead up to the goal. We were told because it wasn't the goal scorer that that had no impact. It was, it was a goal, it was a fair goal in accordance to the rules. Well, we've just seen a situation today in our favour, or what should have been in our favour, where it grazes Theo Bear's bicep and lands at Lennon Miller. has no effect on what's happening. We score a perfectly good goal goal and it's chalked off, we're searching for something, we're looking for something and you know what, I wish they were searching for that against Ross County because they certainly weren't at that time um, but I went on the rules at that point, I went hard on the rules that if it's not the goal scorer then the goal stands and that's actually what we're saying to the fourth official but lo and behold the rules changed today, the rules uh, the rules went a different way today and this is what's driving everyone nuts and I feel really sorry for supporters, yeah they want us to play better and yeah they want to see us doing well in a game of football um, but it, you know what, it's really detracting from their enjoyment in the game and you can hear their frustrations Possibly partly uh, in, in, in our performance, um, but I think in a huge element in, in terms of the, the, the decisions that were made on that pitch today that have an effect, they do have an effect. Wasn't the only incident involving VAR because there seemed to be a very similar case of handball up the other end of the pitch right at the end of the game. What was your take on that? Yeah, one? I've seen it again. I've watched it again here. Um, the ball goes up in the air, uh, Shinny's arms out in front of him. Um, what I would class as an unnatural position. It's probably a natural position, Scott, but every week we see these types of penalties given and these types of handballs given. Well, he stops the game at the, at, at the end, they're going to check it. Um, we've dissected the contact in Theo Bear's arm that much that we actually find a fault in it. We think it's something that should impact the goal that we scored. And if you look in the last seconds of the game, uh, it comes off Shinny's arm. We've spoke about uh, there's been mass hysteria about uh, an instant at uh, uh, Tynecastle with Hearts and Celtic, and you know how can that be a handball? That's a clear handball that I've just seen out there today. But again, lo and behold, there's no intervention for the VAR, and we decide that, um, that the, the, the game ends on that and it finishes.
uh, by how we're officiating games just now, it's a penalty all day long. And yet again, we've missed another one. And that has a massive effect on seasons. It has a massive effect on livelihoods, on everything else, fan enjoyment, enjoying the rest of the weekend. Um, but we've come out on the wrong side yet today. And, 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 and for that, I'm really up. I'm really disappointed, but I'm also up about our, our performance as well, I have to say. Now the game's done, it's another break. We were in, we were on a, a built a little bit of momentum up to back back to back wins just prior to that break there. Where do we go from here? What's what's the assessment? Well, obviously uh, it's not ideal for me in the sense that we go into another break here. Um, we go into an international break. We've got several players away. We've got a lot of players away, which has been a positive thing. And I spoke about that during the week. Um, but with the players that we've got, we go back to work, Scott. Um, we go back to work to look forward to the next challenge that's ahead of us, uh, the next game that's ahead of us. And we have to acquit ourselves better and play better than what we did today. Very very simply. Um, I'm not making excuses. What I'm saying to you is factual in terms of the decisions that were made in that game today. But I've told the players the same way I'm standing here in front of you today that we were miles off our levels. And not one of us for me came out with, with pass marks. Not one of us impacted the game the way that I've seen them in, in recent times. Um, and we have to take ownership for that. I will. I certainly will do. Um, but I know that I'm working with an honest group of players and guys that will be disappointed tonight as they sit in their house. Um, but just unfortunately, we have to wait a, a, a stretch of time for our next game. But we'll be ready for it and we'll be working hard in between. Thanks for your time, Stuart. Sure. Cheers.